Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Drinking and Drawing. Today I'm drinking a Ripe Pour from Yon Tea. It is their... I don't know, actually how, know how to spell this word. I mean, pronounce it. So I'm going to put it on screen for you guys. And I'll put a link in the description. But it is a Ripe Tuo. It's from 1994. And I love Ripe Pour. And I love Aged Ripes as well. Especially the ones from Yon are always so good. I don't know what it is about aged ripes, if it's like, it's just, just how they made it, that's just how they used to make it back then, or if it's like actually the storage and the time, and I like how it's aged. I'm not really too sure how it is. I find that aged ripes like this are really, really different from a lot of other teas, um, especially other ripes. It could just be on storage and, and the amount of time that it's been stored for, but I also feel like the preparation of the tea back then maybe was a little bit different. So this tea's super smooth, very clean, a little bit of an oily mouthfeel, which is pretty nice. The aroma, the aroma itself is quite like wet. Like I was a little bit nervous about it being too wet pile taste. Um, it smells very wet wood, wet pile, muddy smell, but the flavor is very clean. It's very smooth, there's no bitterness at all, and like you could definitely oversteep and overleaf this one to your heart's content. If you're looking for a bit of a stronger flavor and maybe something a little bit more affordable from Yeon, I would not recommend this one. This tea is a bit expensive, but also it doesn't, it's not too crazy with flavor. It's very chill tea. Um, if you're looking for like something really, really like musty and gross, which is how I like it too. Um, I totally recommend the best taste ripe. That's a good one too. Maybe I'll review that one on, at some point on this channel. I don't know. Also the purple mark. That one's a little bit too dank for me, but I do also enjoy that one and you could get it. that whole cake. It's pretty affordable. So try either of those out as well. Yon Tea makes some great stuff and their storage is awesome. That, that like ginseng e Chinese medicine-y smell and taste is always in all their teas. It is fantastic. Um, other than tea today, this is drinking and drawing. Obviously, I'm talking to you guys about tea. I'm letting you guys know about tea that I like. But I also have a new sketchbook, although it's not that new anymore because I have drawn in it. I was going to not draw in it before I was going to record this. I was going to start the sketchbook during drinking and drawing, but then it, I had such a hard time stopping myself from drawing something. And let me just really quickly, I have my name and my phone number on the first page and I wanna clip that off for you guys so I don't jump scare anyone with my phone number. Sorry, no, no free phone number for y'all. If you're at a convention or something and you want my phone number, ask nicely, I might give it to you, but <laughs> I don't want you guys to see that on the internet like that. So now I got a clip on there for you. Um, yeah, this sketchbook is pretty new. Uh, it's small, but thick. It's got a lot of pages and these are very thin, like kind of multimedia-esque pages. So I am both nervous and excited for this sketchbook because the inspiration for this sketchbook here, by the way, this is by a, a this little sketchbook is from a specific artist. Their name is Pemprika, P-E-M-P-R-I-K-A. I think is how you spell it. I'll leave a link to them as well in the description if I remember. If I don't remember and someone wants the link, please just let me know to any of these things, to the tea, to the sketchbook, whatever. Let me know and I'll leave a link if I forget. Um, but yes, this sketchbook is by them. I really like their art and I buy a lot of their stuff. Um, I'm a big fan of this sketchbook in particular, so I have it. It's got a cute little, cute little uh, edge there. You guys can't see because the autofocus on my camera is not on. I have my camera set to manual focus for stuff like this. But anyway, the sketchbook, ins the inspiration for this sketchbook is from a previous sketchbook that I did. And I plan on doing this sketchbook wholly in blue. So I have my tools. At least these are my tools for now could change in the future. I have a blue Ohuhu marker, 67. You guys can't see that, but it is 67. Okay, trust me. I've got a blue micron pen. 
Love this guy. Awesome. I've got a uh, blue ballpoint pen. Paper mate. Straight up got it from CVS. And I have a blue colored pencil. Blue Prismacolor colored pencil. It is um, peacock blue. Sorry. That is what what this color is. Uh, and I'm glad that I'm kind of kind of glad that I started the sketchbook before recording because I've noticed a couple things with the sketchbook. One of them is that it doesn't take to my ballpoint pen 100% nicely. It's fine, but it's not the best. And the other is that stuff like this really needs time to dry. The pages are pretty smooth, and a micron like this guy right here it needs time before going over with anything else or smudging my hand or something could totally happen and I don't want that to happen. So it's good that I experimented first, but I'm going to show you guys the first couple pages of the sketchbook and some of it's good, some of it's bad. And that's how it should be with a sketchbook. You never know what you want, but I've started kind of doing some interesting stuff here. Maybe not a hundred percent interesting. I feel like my exposure is too high. Let's tone that. How's, how's, how's that? Is that good? No. I'll go on more lower. It's because I'm next to a light bulb. That's better. Okay, so, um, I, I did this cat drawing as my first drawing in the sketchbook, and it's because I saw him on Pinterest, and I really liked him, and I thought he was funny. Um, I also did, uh, I've been designing a plush. No one tell, um... No one tell my partner that I'm doing this because it's supposed to be a secret. Don't tell them that I'm making a plush for them. Um, hopefully they don't watch this video and get it spoiled. I guess I could just tell them to not watch the video. <laughs> um, yeah, I was designing a plush. This is like the ultimate, how it's gonna end out is this little guy right here. Um, let me zoom in. No, inwards, 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 inwards. Bring him close. There he is. That is what I want him to look like. Maybe I'll share that when, when it's done. I don't know. Isn't he cute? He's like a kind of like a cat, but he's got like a star for his head, and then he's got little feet and the tail. And I might put a magnet in the body, or maybe in the tail. I'm not really too sure how I'm gonna do it, but I think having a magnet in him would be really funny. So, oops. Oh my goodness. Sorry. Here we go. Let's zoom back out. What happened to our exposure, though? What the... I don't even know what happened to the lighting. Did the lighting change? Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. We're fixed. We're fixed. We're... I fixed it. Okay, so, yeah. Um, that's how that has been going. I don't know if I'm in focus or not. I think I am. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Anyway, that was my first two pages. Then I kind of did this for a little bit. I didn't even, like think I was just like I need to draw today and I totally forgot that I wanted this to be recorded I almost wish I had recorded this sketchbook spread here because I feel like this is way more interesting than what I want to draw today <laughs> is like these chimneys and whatnot and the flowers um but I also drew a boat the other day so I have to put something up here to create visual interest. I drew this little house and then I did a dog. I did a Borzoi. Um, I'll talk about Borzois later because that's related to something else, but that's a secret right now. Um, but I wanted to show you guys before I even start drawing any of what's next. I wanted to show you guys um, this sketchbook and I'm not going to do a complete sketchbook tour for this guy yet. I will do I will do that in another video. That is not going to be in this video. It'll be in a future video, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, here is the sketchbook that I really like that I did. I did this guy. Um, he's dated October 2022 to February 2023. So I didn't have him for that long of a period of time. This is probably the quickest sketchbook I've finished ever. I don't even know how fast I did it. It was pretty quick. Um, I know it's a tiny sketchbook. Some of you guys are probably like, Fee, I've done like eight sketchbooks in that amount of time. Listen, man, I'm pretty slow. I'm a slow guy, but I wanted to just quickly let you guys peek. So I don't want to go like completely spoil it, but I wanted you guys to see a little bit of it and how it um, is all red. How about all blue? Isn't that funny? 
Uh, it's also an accordion sketchbook. I'm gonna stop here, by the way. This will be where I end. But as you can see, it came out really cool with the red, and I really, I love red. Red's my favorite color. I wish I could do more in red, but I wanted to shake it up, have some blue. So um, I even wrote down what tools I used, which is right here, micron and another micron and paper mate red ballpoint pen. I got the blue one now, Prismacolor Crimson. So pretty much the same tools, except I've added um, the alcohol marker. Other than that, same tools, same thing, same gist. The only reason why I didn't use an alcohol marker for this one was probably because I was at school and I forgot them at home. But I'll talk about this guy another day. We'll go through him another time. He is not for today. <laughs> what is for today is this guy and I'm telling you, like, I wish I had recorded this this spread here, but I didn't, and then I didn't record this one, and now there's already a Borzoi here. That's okay. We, I might flip the page anyway and come back to this, but today I wanted to draw cats. <laughs> um, a lot of the times when I sit down to draw, I usually just want to draw cats. That's kind of my MO sometimes, it's just... I wish I could just draw cats all day, especially cats like on Pinterest or something. So I have my sketchbook and today we're gonna be drawing meme cats. Cats from memes, specifically like TikTok and Instagram shorts. Cats, I don't watch TikTok, but I do watch Instagram reels. Sorry, they're not called shorts, that's YouTube. I watch a lot of Instagram reels and I really wanted to draw some of the funny cats. So we're gonna do that today. Why wouldn't we? Um, I'm gonna bring up my Pinterest board here and then I'll get right back to you and we'll start with that first cat. Okay, so I made a Pinterest board of cats that I really think are really funny and they're from memes. Um, most of them are orange. <laughs> I guess I just really like orange cat memes. Like they're just really funny to me, but I'm gonna start with Stewie since I've drawn Stewie before. If you don't see him, you don't know who he is. Um, I'm not gonna pull up the photo because I just want him to come together. And then by, by the time I'm done drawing Stewie, you'll be like, oh yeah, that guy. <laughs> Some of these cats I don't know the names of, like, um, <laughs> and that's okay. That's okay. Like what is uh, the ratchet cat's name where the lady's like, stop being ratchet. I don't know what his name is, <laughs> but I do know Stewie's name and I've, I've drawn Stewie once before, so. I'm gonna draw Stewie again, since he's the cat I'm most comfortable with in this situation. And maybe we could talk a little bit about how sketchbooks go. I'm gonna start out, well actually I might, maybe I'll sketch in, in marker. Um, I'm gonna start out sketching in marker. And I could definitely tell you why that is and how that works, but we'll get started on Stewie really quick. I'm gonna start off with his nose, which is what I usually start off with when I'm drawing a good feline. Um, sketching in marker is super useful. In case you haven't tried it, try it. If you're an artist for some reason, watching my video and you never sketched a marker before, you have some alcohol markers sitting around, or even like a highlighter is actually really good too. Um, give it a whirl because I don't know, something about it just helps helps lay down values and dimension very quickly. It's just a good tool to sketch with. When you go to, if, when you go to art school, if you go to art school, at any point, your professors will oftentimes tell you about the benefits of sketching in pen, which is a, a big thing that professors will encourage you to do, especially in life drawing. You'll be encouraged to draw with pen quite a bit. Um, and that's, that's like a great way to learn how to be I guess, stricter with your decision making with your lines, like more decisive, less indecisive. Um, it's a good way to sketch. And I had never really heard about sketching with marker in particular, like alcohol markers like this one until I took a class at SCAD. And my professor was like, you guys should all try sketching in marker. It's kind of baller. 
Um, he wasn't forcing us to or anything. He just like brought it up, like in passing. He was like, I really like sketching and marker because this guy does it and I wanted to try it. And I was like, that sounds like fun. Like I kind of like experimenting with different tools like that. I kind of want to try it. And I did. <laughs> and since then I've been kind of enjoying using marker to sketch. So, especially when you use the broad tip, like if I were to switch broad here, sketching becomes a little bit harder, but it also becomes uh, a little bit more interesting. So yeah, if, if you've sketched with marker before and you haven't used the broad tip to sketch, give that a try too, because it also changes things. Um, you could come in here, you could even lay out value, like while you're sketching. I really like doing that while I'm sketching. That's something that really helps my sketches is when I'm kind of laying out value and kind of getting it just for the curvature of things. Like Stewie's eyes are really weird. And I think that's kind of the point of him. And it's okay if I misplace it because I'm working here with some marker. So this is the first cat I'm drawing today and I thought he would be easy because I've drawn him before, but if I struggle, I struggle. You know, that's the point. I'm not gonna not show you guys my struggles drawing Stewie. And I will say, I will definitely have to fast forward through some of this video as always. I don't really remember how I used to record these because it's been so long. Um, <laughs> I don't remember uh, if I used something like this before. Where is it? This guy, I have like a little fast forward note for myself again. I feel like I've used one before um, on, on video, but if this thing is on screen, it's a note to myself while editing that I need to fast forward a section. And I don't know anyone else who does that on their <laughs> or YouTube, but it helps me remember what sections I wanted to fast forward, but I won't, I won't do it yet because I'm still talking about sketchbooks and sketching stupid cats. The sketchbook is super intimidating to me that I'm working on right now. It literally kind of is like, I usually don't work, don't work in just blue. I usually work, um, I've worked in just red, but just blue is hard. And the paper type here is, super, super smooth multimedia paper, which is also kind of scary to me, as well as the length. Like this is a really large commitment. So I, uh, I'm going to sketch as much as I can and like make as many mistakes as I can. The sketchbook will probably be sloppier than ones that I usually have, but also it'll still have some neatness to it. I think that when you're using a sketchbook, you kind of have in mind like the sketchbook's purpose. Um, like some people are drawing in a sketchbook because they want to have that sketchbook in their portfolio or they want it to be shown um, to their professor or they want to show it in a YouTube video or something. And that kind of changes how you go about sketching. Like sketchbooks that are going viral online, sketchbook tours that are getting popular, those are sketchbooks that are oftentimes drawn in a specific way, more planned out, less spontaneous, less, less experimentation, more showing off the things that you're good at. And this isn't going to be that kind of sketchbook for me, but at the same time, it is a little bit like I'm might give a sketchbook tour on it at some point. My family likes looking at my sketchbooks. They like going through them. So I would want to be, you know, mindful, but also not, not limiting myself to just stuff that I know. And I think that's where the length of the sketchbook definitely helps me is like, there's a lot of space for me to do both of those things, draw stuff that is interesting and fun for someone else who's reading it or looking at it. And then there's enough space for me to experiment and make a lot of mistakes. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Uh, let me know how you guys go about your sketchbooks. I really want to know, um, especially if some of you guys are the kind that love showing them off 
online and really tries to focus on showing what's what they're good at. I'm good at drawing cats, though, I will say. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to grab a tissue really quick. I will be right back. Also, my water. I need water so bad. All right, I got myself my water bottle. Back to drawing. Stewie! Maybe you guys know, maybe you don't. But what the heck was I saying? Sketchbooks. Uh, if I was going to talk about sketchbook anxiety, because that's something that I have dealt with and that I understand um, how that goes. And I think sketchbook anxiety really exists, like that anxiety of working on a sketchbook, starting a new sketchbook, whatever. If you're one of those people who abandons your sketchbook after a certain point or you have a bunch of empty ones and you just keep starting new ones and not finishing them, I feel like those are some symptoms of sketchbook anxiety. And I think a lot of that comes from what I was just talking about, the internet, and specifically the people who have really, really gorgeous sketchbooks that they've been working on. And you're, you're a little intimidated because your sketchbook doesn't look that neat. Your sketchbook isn't that clean. How do people, how do people do that? How do people uh, sketchbook so beautifully and not make so many mistakes? Well, let me just say that that is a very different type of sketchbook than one that you're using to learn. Like, if you're using a sketchbook to learn how to draw anything, then you should know that, uh... Um, that's gonna end up different. It's gonna be different for you than it is for someone else who is using their sketchbook for display purposes. And I oftentimes think of people who are working on sketchbooks like that as they are not working on it as a sketchbook. They are working on it kind of as its own piece of art in its own right. When I take a look at like my red sketchbook, this thing is not really a sketchbook that I experimented and learned anything from other than how much I like the color red. Um, this was a sketchbook that I definitely used more of like as a flex or as its own standalone piece of art people make sketchbooks that they want to show as its own art. Like sketchbooking has kind of become its own art. And when you're starting a sketchbook, you got to keep that in mind. Like, what is this going to be for? Uh, am I doing this because I want to learn how to draw and I'm experimenting and I want to allow myself the full creative freedom of failing and, and succeeding and whatnot? That is something that you need to know. And I think for most of you guys, a lot of you guys need to you know, keep that in mind. Like, there is no pressure. Like, this sketchbook is meant to be for you to learn with. You do not have to have that pressure. Like, no one has to see what's going on in your sketchbook if you don't want them to. Um, you could show it to no one ever and... and you would simply just be working on it to improve your art, and that is fine. And I think that's a very noble thing. And maybe when you're done with it and you see how how it's come out, maybe then you want to share it. But if you still don't want to share it, I think that is very, very good for you. So if you have sketchbook anxiety, um, you, my biggest tip is just take things less seriously. I mean, that's really, that's really my advice is like, uh, don't worry so much and don't fret so much and, and don't think about it so hard. Don't think too hard. <laughs> think less. Have less thoughts. Um, use less of your brain, please. And you might find that that sketchbook anxiety becomes a little bit easier. So I'm going to fast forward here because I feel like that's a good point to let you guys enter time-lapse land. Um, I feel like this isn't really visible. You know, it'd be really cool if we like... This might be a terrible decision, actually. Do I have a Sharpie? No, I don't. I have all kinds of microns, though. What if, like, I use the eraser as the fast-forward thing? Like, I drew on it. That's kind of cool, right? Alright, so whenever the eraser's on screen, that's when I, uh, I'm zooming away, right? So 
I'm entering time lapse land. Okay, I'm gonna like put music on for myself or something. So there is Stewie. Guys, y'all recognize him? Maybe not. Maybe you do. I love this cat. Um, he's definitely one of my favorite internet cats. But uh, I'm gonna draw another cat. I'm gonna think about what the heck I was gonna say on this video as well. Because I don't even remember what I was supposed to say. Other than blah blah blah, sketchbook anxiety, blah blah blah, meme cats. Let's draw... Mm. Hmm... Hard decision, but this one cat has been really bothering me on social media. I don't know what his damage is. Um, let me show you guys who this guy is. Wait, sorry, Pinterest is being sus. This guy, do you know him? I don't. Well, I do, but I don't really know his name. But uh, he's been <laughs> he's been all over Instagram, and I just can't get enough of him because I think he looks hilarious, and his ears are always flat, and he's got this bob tail. He lives with his cat, his cat housemates. And I don't honestly know why he looks like that. I don't really know why he does that. Why he makes the face like that, stink face like that. Probably draw him like down here in this area. That way I have a little bit more up here for other cats. But um, I was going to talk about my, uh, my small business. Because I think that if I am doing things like I'm doing them right now, which is that I'm reopened my postcard uh, seasonal club thing. And this is not like an ad for that. I'm not telling you guys to go and like support my Kofi slash coffee account and join the postcard club. I mean, I am telling you that it exists, but I'm not forcing you guys to go over there. I am just mentioning it because it is relevant right now because 
hopefully, hopefully I continue working on it. And if I do, that would mean that there would might be more YouTube videos in the future because um, I only record drinking and drawing when I'm working on like a traditional piece. I don't do it for digital. It's the way that I record my traditional art because obviously all my digital art, a lot of it I do it on Twitch. So you guys already see that. Whereas here's more traditional. This is all traditional work. And if I continue working on Dogwood Post, my little small business, it could mean that I would be sitting in this desk more often painting than I have been for a while. And that means more drinking and drawing videos. That's what basically what I'm trying to say is if I have more paintings to do, I would like to sit down and record them more. I've actually scripted a couple videos as well for YouTube that I just have not gotten around to um, to really working on those a whole lot. I think that I just get shy. I have the tendency to write a lot of essays, video, meant to be video essays, but I just write essays anyway for fun often. I don't know why I have weird ADHD. Um, and I wanted to uh, take those essays that I so obsessively, weirdly write, and I wanted to make it into a YouTube video or two. So I, I have like a script for one right now that I'm thinking about doing, and that might happen. This will definitely come out first. I have no idea whether or not that's gonna actually occur. <laughs> like, don't hold me to it, but I hope that it I hope that it does go through. I think that it's an important an important topic to talk about, even though it's not really. But uh anytime I anytime I want to record something for YouTube like that, it is always art related. So I will be talking about something that is art in that video. And anytime I make a video like that in the future, if I actually go through with it, it will also be art related. So I'll probably just be talking about weird art stuff, exploring different art things, projects, films, shows, comics, paintings, sculptures, artists themselves, etc. Anything that could be taken as art, you know, I really want to uh, work on that, work on stuff like that, especially like internet art and stuff that is up and coming in the, in the common era due to media. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I really want to uh, make some videos like that. I'm always just, I guess, amused and really enjoy watching more essay formatted YouTube videos. I don't know why that is, but that's really what I watch all day is like when I'm on, when I'm working or just farting around during the day, I am oftentimes like watching YouTube and I'm specifically watching mostly like video essay content on anything educational that I could get my hands on. I just have this like thirst for internet knowledge, I guess you could say. I, I can't I can't be bothered to watch videos that are for fun. I'm always wanting to learn something. Um, that kind of sounds like a humble brag, but it's not. I literally am just obsessed with like shoving information into my skull. And um, I know a lot of weird topics now because I probably watch several hours, maybe like upwards of 10 hours of YouTube every week, probably more than that. Just like um, educational content, documentary style stuff a lot. Look at this freaking drawing. <laughs> I'm sorry. He just looks so funny. I don't know why his ears are flat like that. No, I don't know why he looks like that. And I know he has like really brittle and like short whiskers going on too, which I, I've seen in the videos of him, this cat, whatever his name is. I don't know what his name is. Oh, but he's very funny and I did I did take the uh, colored pencil approach for this one yeah just because I like 
like uh, changing things up. I wanted to see how the colored pencil came out in comparison to uh, Stewie over there who was done in marker first. <laughs> Maybe I should zoom in more for you guys. How's oh? Do you do you like this guy? Do you guys know him? I don't really know his name. What's his name? Anyone know this guy's name? I don't know his name, but um, I could check Instagram at some point. I, my Instagram is locked during the day. Like I don't have access to it until after 10 p.m. I lock up my social media accounts. People are like, why do you need to do that? Why don't you just stop using it on your own? Bro, it just helps me, okay? It just helps me. It just helps me. I use screen screens in. It helps me, uh, helps me not waste all my time browsing Instagram during the day. I like need that kind of phone <laughs> ability to block what I'm, what I'm doing. Otherwise I would, I would just watch cat videos all day, probably for like eight hours. And I, I can't let myself do that, but I totally could do it. His lips are pink. He got pink lips. I hear they're blue because everything's blue, but he's got some pink lips. He's got those weird eyes too. Like he's got a... Uh, when you're drawing cats that are really dumb, make their eyes like kind of going in two different directions. Stewie's does that naturally. Stewie's eyes are just naturally pointed in different directions sometimes, but this guy, even if he is looking kind of in one direction, Having his eyes point opposite way is really, really helps uh, bring home the message of him being a funny meme, a cat that is a funny meme. I mean, look at him. What is up with this guy? I don't even know. <laughs> All right, well, I'm gonna fast forward again. Unless I think I have anything else to say. I don't really, other than I might make more videos and I still stream on Twitch, by the way, if anyone wants to watch my Twitch streams, I stream on Twitch. I try to stream once a week, whether that be on Monday or Sunday or Saturday, usually one of those days. Um, I only not stream if I'm really busy with something else, but I usually am streaming once a week right now. No set schedule, but if you want to see my work there too, I'm also doing that. But yeah, I'm trying to bring back my small business and I will leave links everywhere if you want them. But for now, let's draw this wacky, wacky feller for sure. Guys, what do you all think about him? <laughs>
he come out okay? It kind of looks like him. I feel like some things are wrong, but... It <laughs> he just looks really stupid all the time, doesn't he? I mean, that's just the way that things are for some of these cats. They just are stuck into looking like knuckleheads for their whole lives. I'm trying to choose which cat is going to be next here. I don't really know. Ooh, Pinterest is being weird. Um, and I might draw, let me see, oops, I could draw Mr. Fresh, or I could draw this guy, who I think, oftentimes I see him and I think he looks even weirder than Mr. Fresh, which is this cat from popular Chinese TikToks. This guy is awesome looking. Look at him. Look at him looking at the camera with those eyes. Um, another meme cat. And I think I'm totally gonna give him a whirl instead. Um, but I also might just like fast forward right through it since I've kind of already spoken about everything oop, that I wanted to talk about. So I'm gonna draw him. I'll probably be the last cat that I draw before I kind of add decor around the page and whatnot. So I'll fast forward through that and you guys could watch me draw him. How am I gonna do it though? I don't know yet. I might start with marker or mm, no. Cause I already did the colored pencil and then the, and then the ballpoint and I think it came out kind of funky wonky. And then this looks really good. So maybe I'll sketch again with marker and then I'll do the same thing that I did to my feller here and maybe I'll color him in a bit too all right so I will see you guys when that is ready to go
All right, guys, there he is. <laughs> I don't know if I truly was able to capture his sad gaze. His eyes like a little lopsided over here. I feel like that might be one of the causes of issues. Um, to have a lopsided cat, but um, <laughs> he's definitely looking like something. I mean, maybe I'll give him some whiskers and it might help him. Yeah, those are the cats that I just drew today. Would you look at that? Um, so in terms of sketchbook spicing up things, this one really looks stupid, by the way, in my opinion. But anyway, in terms of spicing things up for your sketchbook, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. That's it. I want to go out. There I am. Um, there's a lot of things that you could do. Like, I have that red sketchbook over there, and like I find that the best way to really make a page look appealing is by adding color blocking. And obviously this pen is really good for that. Color blocking is super easy to do. You just, you know, make a shape. We could do it to Stew, Stewie over here. If we want to, we could add a nice rectangle to him to really, I guess, frame him in the page since he is front and center. Color blocking is just one of those ways that you can make your sketchbook look appealing without really doing much to it. Just adding decorative stuff is always a good way to have your sketchbook look cool. And if you're one of those people that's got a sketchbook that you're trying to make look cool, I don't know, try adding some rectangles or something. <laughs> um, this alcohol marker though is so weird on this paper getting it to be smooth is like impossible half the time you kind of have to like cross hatch this nonsense in order to get it to look correct but even then it still looks just a little wrong I'm trying to make it look straight if i can I can make it straight here. Got Stewie. There we go. Now he's kind of in. He's kind of in the frame. He's kind of been framed. He kind of looks like he's floating there, actually. Um, <laughs> I might. Uh, is it still wet? It's fine. Actually, no, I feel like that's going to ruin it. But if I uh, frame his head, yeah, that helps. Just a little bit. Look at that crooked ass rectangle. Um, but it does add some kind of interest to the page, you know, if you do that. You could do it over here with um, this knucklehead. Maybe I just want to add some kind of. grounding for him for our weird orange cats here are these, these are all orange cats aren't they yeah this is the orange cat sketchbook page only even though they're blue here all these cats are supposed to be orange so yeah that's that and i mean just add whatever the hell you want draw some draw some stars which is what i always do i just draw a bunch of stars sometimes Write some stuff, write down your uh, shopping list over here or something like, I need two eggs and five pieces of toast or something like that. And there you have it. I'll probably add stuff around these areas as time goes on. I want to leave space just in case I want to write stuff. I always write stuff down in my sketchbook, like on previous pages, as you could see. I've got other than the date on that one. <laughs> These are all notes and such, so I, I do keep a lot of my notes in my sketchbook as well, so that's one way that I'm probably going to end up filling in space like this, but anyway, um, that is that for these cats. I'm going to bring them nice and close for you guys here. There's Stewie. There's, um, I don't know, Mr. Fresh's friend, whatever this guy's name is. 
And then here's this guy, who I also don't know his name, but I follow him a lot too. Sometimes he's a fruit on his head. Um, yeah, sorry, it's already it's so it's so dark in this room. I've been drawing all day, and it's officially dark outside. But if you guys have any any comments, questions about sketchbooks, or I guess maybe you guys have some feedback or something on me about how I go about my sketchbooks, or you want to know something, or you're you're giving me some kind of pep talk or something. Uh, leave comments for anything that you want to say to me down below and I will absolutely read them and respond because I don't get that many comments so if you leave a comment I, I kind of always see it I always see that and I will read it um, let me know if you guys are big Stewie fans for sure and let me know what tea you guys have been drinking or if you've tried any new teas recently I'm also interested in that kind of stuff but uh, thanks so much for watching. I will see all of you guys hopefully soon again on YouTube.